Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel and welcome back to another chainsaw video. Today I'm going to show you something really weird about this chainsaw that a lot of mechanics won't expect. And the saw I've got here is an older MS441 and it's got a lot of miles on it. The guy that had it before used it to cut firewood and sell it commercially. And again, this chainsaw starts fine. It runs pretty good considering the age. It's just when it gets warm it doesn't want to run properly and it pulsates a bit when it's idling. It's from Lang and it's part number TU-30A. I bought it from the Snap-on truck. You can also get it on Amazon. So the first thing I want to do here is do a compression test. By the way guys, my compression tester comes with this kit here. Now for an older saw, this is an awesome reading, 145 PSI. All right, guys, I've got the spark plug back in. What I will do right now, guys, is start it up. You will see that it runs pretty good, but when it starts to warm up, it's going to start running a little bit erratic. Now, this is a cold start, guys. So as you see guys, it just won't stay idling now that it's warm. So it's idling really erratic when it's warm and I got to feather the throttle. It kind of sounds like it's running really lean and that's probably what's going on. So what I'll do is take it back in the shop. I'm going to show you guys exactly what's causing this issue and you might be surprised. All right guys, so if you look at the way this saw is running, you might think it needs a new carb kit, carb adjustment, different things like that that aren't too bad. And you're absolutely right. This saw came in, the guy said he put in a new carb kit, an OEM Walbro kit, it's a Walbro HD carb. They also put in an intake boot because it was cracked. So they put the new intake boot carb kit and it still runs poorly like that when it's warm. Although surprisingly, it's not that bad at full speed until it warms up. As you saw in the clips there, it's cutting through that wood quite easily. And also you saw the impeccable compression reading on that compression tester. If I do the pull cord trick with it like this, it's coming down really slow. Look at that. And this saw is actually a bear to pull if you don't have the decompressor pushed in. Earlier I was pulling it without it pushed down. So the compression feels awesome, just awesome. Now here's where I'm going to tell you guys a mistake that I made in diagnosing this saw. And that is, I failed to listen to my own advice that I give you guys in almost every video when I work on chainsaws. And if you've guessed it, it's pull that muffler off. Pull the muffler off before you do anything. Even if you have a really good compression reading, pull the muffler off. And this is what I'm going to do now and show you guys what's going on inside there. So to get the muffler off the MS441, you'll need an 8mm socket. There's two 8mm nuts at the bottom. 
and you'll need a T27 Torx screwdriver or bit on an impact. Now this muffler is quite hot so I've got gloves on. Now have a look inside here guys. Look at that piston and rings, they're all scored up. How can this saw even run? And it doesn't end there guys. Just keep looking. Look at the hole through that piston. That's incredible. I've never seen a piston and cylinder and rings worn out so bad. I've actually never seen a hole worn right through the piston like that. And how did it get all that compression even though it's in bad shape like that? That's just insane. And inside the cylinder there it doesn't look that great either. But on the other hand, this saw has cut hundreds of cords of firewood. So I would say that this is just wear and tear. It came in, it had good fuel with good oil. I know the guy always puts in good fuel in that saw, or he did anyway. So the point I want to make today, guys, is if you go to buy a used chainsaw and it feels good, the compression's awesome like this one when it's cold, there could still be issues inside the cylinder as you see on this saw. And this is where people can easily get taken when they go buy a chainsaw if the owner knows because you can go there, start it up, it'll run good. You're not going to use it that much when you're going to buy it. You're just going to start it up, rev it up and that's it. The real test of how good a chainsaw will be is when it's warm. When it gets warm, if it starts to run erratic, it runs lean like you saw in the previous clips, you could just tell by the whining of the engine. If it doesn't want to idle, if it wants to die when you turn it on its side, that could indicate leaking crank seals. Not being as responsive and not being as full of power when you've got it under load cutting firewood. And this saw here is a classic example of how a lot of people can get swindled. So basically what I've told my viewers and a lot of my customers is when you go to buy a chainsaw, at least try to take the muffler off and look at the condition of the piston rings and cylinder. Now, when you go to buy a chainsaw, some owners may not want you to take the muffler off. It's their choice, but just be careful if you buy a saw without taking the muffler off. And you know what, guys? If somebody is selling a saw and they have nothing to hide, what's the big deal about taking the muffler off and showing the customer that's serious about buying it? And a good tip, guys, is if you list a chainsaw online to sell and you're honest, uh, a good thing to do is to actually take the muffler off, take pictures of the piston and rings, and put that in your ad as well. I've sold a lot of chainsaws in the past and a lot of people online were asking me to send them pictures of what the piston and rings looked like, even though they had heard it running in another video. So that's a smart thing to do guys, don't get ripped off. Make sure you bring somebody with you that knows what they're looking for when you're buying a chainsaw, but the least you can do is take that muffler off and have a look. So where I could have been a bit more efficient diagnosing the saw when it came in is to take off the muffler right away because when the guy told me that he replaced the intake boot, the first thing that came to my head is that intake boot was cracked and he did show me the old intake boot, it was super cracked and I will assume that a lot of the damage caused here was running it with the intake boot cracked because what happened is the saw ran too lean for too long. And that's what's going to happen when your intake boot cracks, guys. So always check your chainsaw every year or every season for air leaks, cracked intake boot, loose cylinder bolts, all that stuff. Because if you don't and you keep using your saw, you will end up causing major damage like this. Now, there is a lot of wear and tear on this saw because the guy cut hundreds and hundreds of cords of wood with it. However, if it had been inspected properly, most likely this damage would not have happened. And I do have to admit, guys, that what misled me was the amount of compression that this saw had, which kind of led me to uh, not really follow my own advice and take the muffler off right away. So even if you have good compression, just take it off. You're going to save a lot of time. So I hope this video will help you when you go to buy a chainsaw this spring or this summer. Thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe and that you're following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And have a great day, guys.